general second order differential equation can be written in this form x double dot plus 2 zeta omega n x dot plus omega n squared x equals 0. Again, I'm only looking at the transient response of the system. The term zeta is called the damping ratio, omega n natural frequency. The reason for those names will become obvious in one moment. Let's apply the quadratic formula and find the roots of the characteristic equation. The characteristic equation looks like this, lambda squared plus 2 zeta omega n lambda plus omega n squared is equal to 0. And the roots are lambda 1, 2 minus 2 zeta omega n plus or minus the square root of 4 zeta squared omega n squared minus 4 omega n squared over 2. I can simplify this by dividing the 2 out and factoring out the omega n out of the square root. And this becomes zeta omega n plus or minus omega n times the square root of zeta squared minus 1. Or omega n times zeta plus or minus the square root of zeta squared minus 1. Let's look at the possibilities. First, let's look what happens if zeta is greater than 1. If that's the case, then zeta squared minus 1 will always be greater than 0. And the square root of zeta squared minus 1 will always be less than zeta. Thus, lambda 1, lambda 2 will be real and negative, or the system will be stable because both lambda 1 and lambda 2 will lie in the left half side of the complex plane. If zeta equals 0, then we have lambda 1, lambda 2 will be equal to plus or minus omega n i. There is no real portion, only imaginary portion, which gives us an oscillation of a frequency omega n. Next, what happens if zeta is less than 1, but greater than 0. So it's positive and less than 1. Then we're going to have that zeta squared minus 1 is going to be less than 0. And so when we take the square root, we're going to have an imaginary number. That gives us complex roots. And the roots will have this form. Lambda 1, lambda 2 will be equal to minus omega n zeta plus or minus omega n times the square root of 1 minus zeta squared i. Notice that I've factored the minus 1 out from underneath the square root, which gives me the i, and then I've switched the coefficients here. This is a real part, and it's less than 0. This is imaginary. This tells us how fast the system will decay. This tells us what the frequency will be. The other possibility is that zeta is less than 0. And if it's less than 0, we can see right away that the system will be unstable. That's because the real part of the root will always be greater than 0, which gives us an unstable system. Let's look a little closer at what happens when zeta is between 0 and 1. Again, the solution is going to look like this, minus omega n zeta plus or minus omega n square root of 1 minus zeta squared times i. If we plot that on the complex plane here, we see that the real and the imaginary parts are given by the values minus omega n zeta, and this is omega n square root of 1 minus zeta squared. You should be able to convince yourself that this length right here is omega n just by using Pythagorean's theorem square root of this term squared plus that term squared will give you omega n. This right here is called the damped natural frequency or damped frequency. What happens is we start increasing zeta towards 1. As we increase it towards 1, then the poles become along this line. Right here is zeta is equal to 1. Right here is zeta is equal to 0. So we can see that increasing the damping changes the damped natural frequency, makes the system oscillate slower and slower until eventually it's no longer oscillating. 
Again, decreasing the damping ratio moves the root along this line until we get to this point, in which case the system is no longer damped and it's only oscillating with the natural frequency of omega n. Sometimes people look at this angle here, and you can calculate that angle. Tangent of theta is equal to square root of 1 minus zeta squared over zeta. And an interesting point is what happens at 45 degrees. This is 1. And so you can show that zeta must be equal to 1 over the square root of 2, or 0 0.707. And that's a common damping ratio that people use, and it corresponds to a pole that lies on a 45 degree from the origin. So any pole along this line has a damping ratio of 0 0.707. Sometimes you'll see them draw a grid where there are lines of constant natural frequency. Those are the blue lines. So all poles that lie on these blue lines have the same natural frequency. The red lines correspond to constant damping ratio. All poles that lie on this line has a damping ratio of 0 0.707. Another useful graph is to look at the time domain response. A system that has a damping ratio of 1 looks like this. A system that has a damping ratio of 2 gives a slower response. A system that has a damping ratio of 0 0.707 goes up over the system and just down to it. 0 0.707. So there's this overshoot, but there's very little, if no, ringing. As the damping ratio increases, the systems ring more and more. So this might be damping ratio of 0.2. And these curves characterize what the response of the system is going to be for a given damping ratio.